I there. It's just over a kind of a week, 10 days since I took delivery of my new Canon R3 and the 100 to 500 RF lens. And I've kind of been agonizing over whether I need to keep my 500 F4. And the only way I was going to ever find out is to do a side by side test. So uh, yesterday I went to the Washington wetlands near to my home. It's a perfect opportunity to photograph various birds in different settings, which will give us a definitive test as to whether this is good enough to allow me to dispose of this. I don't know yet, we'll see when we get there. My wife is going to be shooting with this one for me, so we'll be sitting side by side. I'll be shooting with my new gear, and I'll be doing some video as well, just to show the capabilities on the video. Um, I'm looking hopefully to get some flying birds, um, looking to go to a place called Wader Lake where there's many species of birds. Uh, I think the terns have already been gone now, which is normally a great opportunity uh, to photograph uh, birds in flight. However, there should be something else that we can actually kind of hone in on to practice with. And now I'm going to go around and up to the hide where I can actually uh, photograph the small birds. They've got lots of feeders there and there's always a great selection of birds flipping in and out which would be a great test for these two. So on my return I'm going to sit look at them and I'm going to tell you later in this video whether I keep this or dispose of it and just stick with this little guy here. Remember that's four times the value of that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if that one was good enough for me to be able to dispose of that one and have the benefit of great quality photography with the lightness of this particular lens. We'll go out, we'll have a look, we'll see, I'll report back very shortly. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to the Better Photography Channel. And as I finished loading up the car, I just want to tell you a little bit about where I'm off to today. One of my favourite locations, it's Washington Wetland Centre. This is part of the Wildlife and Wetlands Trust, set up some long time ago. It actually has about 100 reserves around the UK, plus a number of reserves in Europe, Asia and Africa. It's basically run as a charitable organisation and it depends on people paying at the gate and also charitable donations. The largest reserve is their flagship reserve at Slimbridge in Gloucestershire. You can spend an entire day or two days wandering around and there is a massive amount to see and photograph. Up here in Washington, there's always loads to be seen. It's always an excellent day out and I'm really looking forward to spending the day here today. It's also a good value too. The cost for a day pass is just £11.50, £7.50 for kids and a family pass will cost you £32.25 for a family of four. The unemployed students and pensioners get in for £10.35 for the full day. Here's the map of the park. Basically, we're going to start off up here at the visit centre. We're going to go down, down towards the river and across to the left to the Weirder Lake. And the three hides that we're going to have a look in are Northumbrian Water Hide, Paddy Fleming Hide and Diego Hide. We're then going to go across to the Saline Lagoon, have a little look in there and then finish off with a journey up the hill the Hawthorne Wood Hide, where we see lots of little birds and have great opportunities to get some great shots. Coming in through the entrance, there's a really friendly reception area with an information centre, a nice gift shop where you can uh, wander on your return, and uh, that leads you straight through past the restaurant area and down onto the pathways that lead you down through the park. It's about a half mile walk to the furthest height, but going down the pathways here, yeah, there's lots to keep you entertained, lots of open areas with lots of birds to see, so you're never bored. When you get to the bottom edge of the pathway, it'll get a little more rustic and you come to the first of the hides, which is the Northumbrian water hide. This one actually is at the very bottom of Weirder Lake, looking straight up the lake. 
and it's not always the best one for viewing. What you should do is go further up to one of the other hides. This one is the Diego hide and in here this is right opposite the island where the terns nest every year and in the spring this will be a wash with terns coming in with food for the babies fighting scrabbling uh, you'll get lots of flight shots lots of images with the birds with fish in the beaks and i recommend you come at this time of the year to get the very best sightings sadly they're not here now because it's too late so i'm going to the paddy fleming hide and i'm going to be shooting from here basically because it's nearest to the nearest birds and here you can see the vista where this is what we've got to deal with today a little bit further away but there's quite a lot of birds already on the pond and i'm going to take shots from this location okay so i've made my way through the park come down to Wader lake I've been trying the camera out for the last hour, hour and a half or so. It's quite a steep learning curve, to be honest, because new camera, new lens, and it, it really, it's a question of getting used to the new settings. And uh, the, the tracking and the focusing seems to be working really well. Um, the, not a lot of flying birds around, we're getting some here and there. The uh, turns, unfortunately, have left now, so a little bit late for that. They will give you a constant stream of flying shots. But uh, I have got some already. Uh, there's a small selection of birds out on the lake, which I've been photographing a little while. I am also trying out the Lens Pro bean bag that's got um, a, a fitting on the top for the gimbal. And it's okay. It's not quite as steady as I might have thought, but I think certainly in certain circumstances, maybe over the car door or whatever, it's better than not having anything at all. So I'm going to stick with it and probably get used to it eventually. So uh, I've t already taken some shots. I like with what I've got already. So I'm going to share them in a montage of images from the day. <laughs> So after a couple of hours at Wader Lake, I made my way to Saline Lagoon. This has been in development for the last 12 years and uh, they've actually produced this lagoon to try and extend the diversity of species to be seen. You can see egret, avocet, spoonbill, curlew, the elusive kingfisher now and then, and if you're very lucky, you may well see otters and roe deer. On this day, not a lot happening, so I decided to make my way to another location, one of my favourites. Hawthorne Wood Hide, guaranteed to get lots of little birds here. They've built this specifically uh, elevated so you can look down 
onto feeders that have been placed in great locations and I've never failed to get some lovely shots from this area that brings in an awful lot of small birds. Well, as you can see, the results are in. You've seen side-by-side -side examples from both lenses. Yes, the, the 500 f4 is, is better in lower light. Yes, on certain images, the backgrounds are better than they would be with this one. But can I live with that? Yeah, I can. I think that my results with this lens here, the 100 to 500 RF, are absolutely stunning. I can live with the fact that the background is not quite as blurred as I might like it with this one, but for the extra cost and the weight and the difficulty of carrying that abroad, the benefits of this lens outweigh those of that one by many times, in my opinion. I would love to get the results I get with that with this. It's not going to happen because you know, you're always going to get better shots in lower light and a better bokeh behind on certain shots. It's only certain shots. It's not every one. If you've got a lot of difference behind your subject, this one will do you fine. If you've got a, a background that's close to the subject, then this one's going to be the one you need. But I can work around that. I've always got Photoshop, after all, and I know what I'm doing with that. So if I had any special shot that I want to make even better, I can actually go into Photoshop and I can make the blur behind. So it's going up for sale. I will dispose of this, stick with this, and have a much lighter case to carry abroad but I'm going to still get the results I'm happy with, with his fantastic lens. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.